Good morning or afternoon, uh, whatever the case may be for you. Maybe it's evening. You're watching one of Chris's uh, videos. Uh, he's got a lot of them. They're outstanding. This particular one is going to be about this car here behind me, the Purple Bitter CD. Now, Eric Bitter is a ra was a race driver in Germany in the early uh, late 60s and early 70s, and uh, he raced Opals. In fact, he raced cars that were prepared, Opals that were prepared by Tony Lapine, who later became the director of design for Porsche. And Tony wanted to go racing while he was working there at Opal Design, and Eric ended up driving the car. And he did very well. In fact, he beat the Porsches. So Eric got to know the Opal management, and one of those people was Bob Lutz. And at that time, Chuck Jordan was the director of design, but he came back to the States and Dave Holes, uh, a terrific designer who did a lot of great uh, muscle cars and the Riviera, 66 Riviera, a lot of other cars. He had a great uh, feeling for sporty elegance. He was a hot rodder at heart. And uh, Dave Holes received the assignment to design a car for Eric Bitter. And it was done as a kind of a research project. I think that's how they wrote it off on the books. But in reality, it was going to be a design that Eric would put into production. This particular car is number 362 of 395 that were built. Eric wanted to do a car of his own. He had, he had done other products. He had a small company doing uh, automobile accessories. And uh, he saw that the Opel Diplomat, which was a, the largest car for Opel, had a small block Chevrolet engine. It also was a star of the time in terms of handling. It had independent rear suspension, uh, um, vented disc brakes, automatic transmission, electric windows, a few other am amenities that made it a kind of a luxury Audubon cruiser. So Eric wanted a special bodied Audubon cruiser based on that Opel chassis. So when Dave uh, got the assignment, I was working, we had a short meeting, Eric Bitter came in, uh, talked about what he wanted to do. We had a month, which is not very long to design a car. So we started immediately with two scale models. Within a week in the Diplomat studio, I had just been assigned there. We had uh, two scale models, each with two sides. They were proceeding at various uh, levels of speed. And within a week, we uh, boiled it down to one design, and it was a particular design that had developed from a sketch that I had made. Dave Holes came over while I was working on the model one, one day after lunch and said, why don't you do the side like the Mongusta? Well, the Mongusta has this sharp break on the body side, and then it has the exaggerated wheel flares. So suddenly we had the profile very similar to the Maserati Ghibli, and the body side uh, very similar to the Mongusta. Now, the Ghibli and the Mongusta at that time were, were still the cars that were driving car design around the world in terms of their design and, and what we would call the form language, that is the shape. The Mongusta and the Ghibli had flat surfaces, sheer sections, sh sharp peaks, and uh, were very dramatic in their profile. So the bidder that we were doing picked up on the profile from the Maserati Ghibli and the body side character, the section and the big wheel lips from the Mongusta. From there, there on, the design went very quickly. Uh, the month went by and we were almost done. Dave asked me to stay uh, a week longer, in, uh, which upset all the travel plans. And uh, I did that and walked away, left the car and completely forgot about it. So when I got to work, back to work in the States at Design Staff, I started uh, working on other projects and it was completely gone from my memory. About two years later, someone came in to see me and said, Dick, go in the garage. There's a really neat Opal in there. 
and I walked in and I was trying to think which car was it that we were working on that it might be and I walked around the wash bay and there standing was this Opal Bitter. It's actually the only one I've ever, ever seen other than this one. And it was silver blue with an orange leather interior. It was like a car for a movie star. And I later got to drive it uh, one lunch hour. And uh, that was really my only experience. I later went to work at Opal Design. And I was there almost five years and I never saw another Bitter. I started to get interested in what it might mean if I thought about buying one. And that led to a purchase of one of the six cars in North America. And this particular car, it was in Los Angeles. And so my wife and I drove it back from Los Angeles to Michigan. Uh, this particular car was owned uh, by two people. Uh, one uh, apparently was likely in the service in uh, Germany in the late 70s when this car was made in 79 and he bought it, brought it back to the States, to Florida, where it stayed a couple years, and then he was gonna sell it, and his brother in Los Angeles said he'd like to have it, so they trucked it to LA, and it stayed there the rest of its life. Now well, there's one more in Detroit. Steve Pasteiner has one, there's one in New Jersey, and there's another one in uh, Phoenix, and those two cars are being restored. There is another one we know of in Florida, but we don't know who owns that. It was pretty much a disaster. Uh, it was. Uh, treating, uh, treated very harshly. Okay. okay, we already spoke about the uh, profile of the bidder being highly influenced by the Maserati Ghibli. Now, the bidder is room for four people, so the profile is a little longer and uh, a little more arched than the Ghibli. The body side, uh, the intention was, and this is abstract, is to come, the body side would come from the Mangusta. And that is the sharp brake line that, that is low on the body, and you'll see it over there on the Mangusta, and then the very full wheel lips that uh, extend out and tie into that brake. Uh, that influence, the body section with the sharp brake and the wheel lips are what brought the Mangusta character into the bitter. Anyway, this particular car, the owners had painted it this purple color which is really interesting because it's not a trendy color. It's very elegant, very sophisticated, uh, and it fits the car very well. It shows the shape, and then every once in a while there's this flash of, of purple. It, has a, it had a new engine put in two years before I bought it, and that engine is a GM crate engine called ZZ4. You have to go back about three years now. And it is a 350-355. It's uh, got uh, Corvette aluminum heads and a roller cam. Very nice engine, a lot of torque. So that engine, along with a special built header system and exhaust system, was put in the car. It wasn't easy because the engine, the crate engine, ha have larger pans and high, high rise manifolds. So some changes had to be made to get it in here because the old 327 was not that way. Anyway, the car currently has about 82,000 kilometers, 60% of that in miles. And uh, it really is fun to, fun to drive, fun to own. I'm going through at this point, uh, I've got the cosmetics pretty much down to what I like. The mechanicals are behind. I'm working on different things to bring the level of mechanical uh, refinement up to what I, what I want to drive on the street. So it's got air conditioning. Uh, it's pretty uh, dramatic car, and at the time when, when we were starting the scale model, there was some discussion with Eric Bitter about what should the character of the car be. And Dave Holes, uh, who's just a great guy, convinced Eric that the car should have Italian style of the current Ghibli and Mangusta with the German engineering. And uh, Eric thought about that for a couple days, and then when he saw what we were doing, we were doing sketches around that, and uh, he became enthusiastic. He'd bring us little drawings in from time to time of what he thought it meant, what he liked to do, and Dave always treated them very seriously. And, but we kind of all knew that uh, Eric was gonna like whatever we did. So uh, we paid attention to what he showed us. We went on and developed the car. And to do a car in a month from zero to to finish, or almost finish, to define a theme is a pretty hard thing to do because you're dealing with a platform, there are hard points, you have wheelbase tread, you've got a cowl height you have to deal with, 
You've got an interior package, visibility, a lot of things to balance. That is not easy, and, uh, but we were able to get it, I'd say about 95% finished by the time the month was over. I stayed one more week, did some details, and more details were done after that. Uh, Opal Design did a fabulous job. The scale model was only one part of the beginning story of, of this design. After I left, they continued to refine the car, the scale model, and uh, then the model was sent to Bauer in Germany. Bauer was a company at the time that was building race cars, Porsches, and they wanted to get into series production. So this was the first project that they did uh, being a car that would run on the street. So Opel Design sent the scale model to uh, Bauer, and then Bauer lofted it, blew it up full size, they made a hard model out of this material at the time, it was like a plastic wood, and painted it and sent that back to Opal Design. And uh, the result was uh, this car, as you see here. So the production started in 73. It was very well received at the Frankfurt Auto Show. And uh, Eric got a, a lot of orders. Unfortunately, right after that show, the, uh, get, the fuel crisis hit and he lost them all. So he proceeded at a very slow rate to build the cars. Uh, by 79, uh, six years later, uh, he built this one. This is 362 of the 395 and uh, came to the States. And I was very fortunate to find it. I wanted to get one since it was one of the few cars that I had worked on that was quite unique and unusual. I mean, to, to work for a big company, and get an assignment where you might possibly do a design for a one-off car that's built by a low-volume manufacturer is really a pretty bizarre situation. But it worked out very well. Eric's a great guy. The reason it happened was Eric is so dedicated and such a hard worker. He's the one that made it happen. We, we only provided the design. All the rest of the work, uh, which is very difficult, managing the engineering, the financials, the manufacturing, working with Bauer, other companies to, to get the thing off the ground. It's a huge task. But uh, that's the story of this car. And uh, you won't see many bidders around. There are only six in the United States. Just keep in mind I've got it and I'm enjoying it very much.